In a two-dimensional plane, two coordinates are required to uniquely identify a point. The coordinate system we're probably most familiar with is the rectilinear, or Cartesian, coordinate system. The two coordinates are the x and y coordinates, the distances along the x and y axes, whose intersection denotes the point. The Cartesian coordinate system requires us to have a reference point, called the origin, and a reference direction, the positive x-axis. Coordinates are specified with reference to the origin using the direction established by the positive x-axis. Another system is the polar coordinate system. It also needs a reference point and a reference direction. The reference point is called the pole, and the reference direction is called the polar axis. The polar axis is often drawn in the same direction as the positive x-axis. In the polar coordinate system, one coordinate is the distance from the reference point, which we'll call r for radial distance or radius. The central angle that the point makes with the polar axis is, predictably, theta. So, in general polar form, a point's coordinates are r, comma, theta, compared to x, comma, y on the Cartesian coordinate system. A polar coordinate graph is usually marked out on special circular graph paper with the pole at the center and concentric circles centered on the pole. The circle's radii mark out convenient distances from the pole. Radial lines at common angles help mark the polar angle, and the polar axis is marked with a zero to denote it's the reference from which the angles are measured. Let's plot the point 2.5 comma pi over 6. First, it's going to be 2.5 units away from the pole, so we can sketch a circle with radius 2.5, and the point will lie somewhere on the circle. The second coordinate, pi over 6, tells us the direction, so our point is along this line denoting the angle pi over 6. The intersection here is the point we want, 2.5 comma pi over 6, 2.5 units from the pole in the pi over 6 direction. Polar coordinates can be positive or negative. Negative angles are measured in the clockwise direction, so the point 2.5 comma negative pi over 6 is still 2.5 units from the pole, but it lies in this direction, negative pi over 6 from the polar axis. So this is the point 2.5 comma negative pi over 6. You might also notice that the second point could correspond to the coordinates 2.5 comma 11 pi over 6. Each point in the plane has more than one polar coordinate ordered pair, because the direction in which a point lies can have its angle expressed in more than one way. In fact, since each angle has an infinite number of coterminal angles, there are an infinite number of ways to express the polar coordinates for each point. This is unlike Cartesian coordinates. Each point on a plane has exactly one Cartesian coordinate xy pair, but an infinite number of polar coordinate pairs. Now let's look at the case where the r coordinate is negative, such as negative 2.5 comma pi over 6. Here's the radial line towards pi over 6. For negative r, we move in the opposite direction, so this point corresponds to negative 2.5 comma pi over 6. As you probably expect, the coordinates 2.5 comma 7 pi over 6 denote the same point. Now let's convert back and forth between these coordinate systems. We're given a point and we're either told the polar coordinates r comma theta and asked to find the Cartesian coordinates x comma y, or we'll be given the Cartesian coordinates and asked to find the polar coordinates. Either way, the key to making these conversions easy is to see this familiar right triangle in your head. It has four variables. To convert back and forth, we either know these two, the Cartesian coordinates, or we know these two, the polar coordinates. Let's start with our first polar coordinate example, 2.5 comma pi over 6, and let's find the Cartesian xy coordinates that correspond to this point. The diagram's not to scale, but we won't let that bother us. For a right triangle, if we know an acute angle and the length of the hypotenuse, we can find the lengths of the sides adjacent to and opposite the acute angle. Since the hypotenuse is r, this side corresponding to the x coordinate is r cosine theta and this side corresponding to the y-coordinate is r sine theta. You should either memorize these formula 
or see the triangle and be able to figure them out. If you're interested in checking your work, the equivalent Cartesian coordinates are 2.2, 1.3, rounded to two significant figures. Now let's go the other direction. We know a point's xy coordinates, and we want to find its polar coordinates, r and theta. We can find r using the Pythagorean theorem. r squared equals x squared plus y squared, so r equals square root of x squared plus y squared. To find angle theta, we need to use an inverse trig function. But which one? From the perspective of angle theta, we know the opposite and adjacent sides. Since tangent equals opposite over adjacent, we can use the inverse tangent function like this. Theta equals arctan opposite over adjacent, which is arctan y over x. Inverse tangent and arctangent mean the same thing. If you need an inverse trig function review, See videos TR-22 through 24. Here's how to find x and y if you know r and theta. And here's how to find r and theta if you know x and y. Very easy, with practice. There's only one thing to look out for, which is the case any time you'll use inverse trig functions. They all have constrained ranges, meaning they'll only ever return angles in two quadrants. Let's run a quick experiment with four different 45 degree angles, one in each quadrant. For simplicity, we'll use the points 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and so on. Tangent is sine over cosine, which is y over x, so they're all either 1 or negative 1. They're 1 in quadrants 1 and 3, where the sine and cosine have the same positive negative sign. And they're negative 1 in quadrants 2 and 4 where sine and cosine have opposite positive negative signs. Starting in quadrant 1, our calculator will tell us that the inverse tangent of 1, that is, the angle whose tangent is 1, is 45 degrees, which matches our expectation. See TR-25 for inverse trig functions on a calculator. Down in quadrant 4, our calculator will tell us the inverse tangent of negative 1, that is, the angle whose tangent is negative 1, is negative 45 degrees, which also matches our expectations. Here in quadrant 2, the tangent is negative 1, just like it was in quadrant 4. So our calculator is going to tell us again that the inverse tangent of negative 1 is negative 45 degrees, which does not correspond with our expectation of 135 degrees. Similarly, in quadrant 3, we already know that our calculator is going to tell us the inverse tangent of 1 is 45 degrees, because that's what it told us for quadrant 1. But we'd expect this reflex angle to be 225 degrees, or maybe negative 135 degrees. They both have the same terminal side down here in quadrant 3. So when using any inverse trig function, not just arctangent like we're using here, double check that the angle returned corresponds to the data you know. The arctangent function always returns angles between negative pi over 2 radians and pi over 2 radians, or negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees, which correspond to angles in quadrants 1 and 4. When converting Cartesian coordinates to polar form, if you have the coordinates of a point in quadrants 2 or 3, the arctangent function will be off by pi radians, or 180 degrees. So add or subtract pi radians, or 180 degrees, to get the actual angle. We'll work through some sample problems in TR-45X. Many programming languages include a special arctangent function, usually called arctan2 or atan2. The 2 is a reminder that the function takes two arguments, the x and y coordinate of the point. So instead of dividing y by x and giving the function this quotient, we give the arctan2 function the distinct x and y coordinates of the point. The function divides y by x and determines the arctangent of the quotient. Then, because it knows the x and y coordinates, it knows which quadrant contains the angle, and it will return the correct angle in the range negative pi to pi. Here I show how this works in Excel. The top section shows the traditional arctangent function supported by most calculators. As we saw a moment ago, this function doesn't return the correct angle in quadrant 2 or 3. But the bottom section shows the syntax for using atan2. When given the distinct x and y values, 
the function returns the correct angle because the x and y values tell it the angle's quadrant. Check with your language reference to see if the x comes first or the y comes first in the function's argument list. Video TR-45X has extra worked out problems. In the next video, TR-46 will cover polar equations.